Okay, this is the third part. Uh, a couple things I did in the uh, meantime is I added a black stroke for the Happy Halloween and I turned it off with the other things. So when I run it, I now have this black outline um, on my Happy Halloween. Could I change the stroke weight? I could. So if I put it right here and made it three, I kind of like that actually better. So we'll leave that. Um, if you don't do, if you forget the no stroke down here um, and you run it, you can't see that it causes an issue, but it would actually continue down in here. You don't really want it down there, so we're going to put the no stroke in before we do that text. Um, it puts it to the outside of the line, so it you can't see it because of the black background, but it would have been there um, if we didn't. So right now we've got uh, clicking. Uh, twenty More than 20 clicks gets me to open the coffin ghost comes out we now want the ghost to kind of travel um, in this direction so think about what our X and Y are doing so Y is going to be decreasing and X is also going to be decreasing so as soon as that happens we turn the visibility of the ghost to true coffin goes to open we should actually do that first open the coffin ghost goes visible and then we need to start um, changing um, its X and Y value so ghost dot x uh, gets ghost dot x minus uh, we'll just do minus two for now and then we're also going to do a ghost dot y gets ghost dot y minus two so we should have this now that when I open it I'm going to change this to like two clicks instead of 21 Uh, why is he not moving? Well, where did I put this? Put this outside the if statement. So that ghost is long gone by now. We can actually look and see it. Ghost.x. And look, it's negative. It's way out here. So, so look, it's already, it's almost off the screen already. Like, and I haven't even finished clicking. So he's gone. He gone. So, you need to move these inside of that if statement. We only want it to change if we're over 20 clicks. So now, see how the ghost property is not moving? And now there he goes. Now, what happens if we want the ghost to kind of drift to the, with the X and not and go up steadily. So we want the X to not be a minus two, we want to do like a random number between, how about um, minus four and minus two. So it kind of does some variation here. Again, you want to put the lower number there and the larger number there. I gotta change that click number. That's gonna drive me nuts. Let's do two right now. Oh, oh! look, we're doing minus and negative. Went the wrong way. So this is going to be 2 to 4. Let's try this. There it goes. See how it kind of does a little flutter, kind of moves back and forth? Let's do a little bit bigger jumps. Let's do, um, let's do 1 and 7. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Kind of looks like he's floating away. Nice. Um, if you don't want him to go that fast, you can maybe do uh, six. And then you could do a negative one on there. Let's try this. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. That's some good motion. So that, that takes care of those things. Now I just need to do my bat. Um, so I want my bat to become visible when it's above that gray line. So down here, I don't want to see the bat, but as soon as my mouse comes across there, bat should be visible. So I'm going to do an if statement. And if um, mouse or world dot mouse y, is greater than, I think it was 250. No, I'm sorry, less than 250. 
because we're going above it. So if it's less than 250, we want to turn our bat visibility on. So we're going to do true for visible for our bat. And when it's not, we want its visibility to be off. So do a bat dot visible is false. Uh, that's not the right word. There we go. And then the other thing we want is we want to track the bat X and bat Y with the mouse. So I can do this outside of um, the if statement. This can just be in my loop. So it constantly updates where my bat is, but it won't be visible unless he's um, above that Y line. So let me reset and rerun this. So I should have a bat. There we go. So it's it's following me wherever I go, you know, in this space. Again, there's a little bit of lag. I mean, if I go super fast, it's gonna it's gonna try to track there, but it's not bad. And then he disappears, like he flies down below. Now this is kind of weird. It's over here, and he disappears. So I could do, you know, where if he goes below this point, or how can I make it so the bat actually flies behind the coffin? Ooh, tricky, tricky. Well, where do I need to put the coffin in relation to the bat when I create them? So if you notice the coffin is created first, then the bat, well, I want the coffin to be out front of everything. So I'm gonna create the coffin last or move it so that it's like it's created last. So now when I run this, here's my bat. Look at that. Bat goes behind the coffin before it disappears. You can see it now behind there. And that's kind of legit. Oh, so what did the ghost appear? Again, let's look at that. See, now the ghost is behind, not out on top of there. So. Who's on top of the coffin? The ghost. So we're going to move the ghost on this side of the coffin. Let's run it. There we go. That's by the ghost. Like it. This is nice. This is kind of what I want. Looks good. The only change I might make is that I don't turn the bat on without, I've got to go up to the moon to turn the bat on. I don't know, or I could, ah, there's a lot I could do. I think I'm just gonna stick with this and call it good. Let's check my rubric and make sure I hit everything. Do I have at least three sprites? Yes. At least one sprite responds to user input. So key down, mouse did move, yes. So I've got actually um, a few of my sprites move with um, with that. So let me put this clicks back to 20. So I've got a user input. I've got this sprite is adjusting with clicks. And then this sprite also adjusted with clicks too. Um, my coffin um, did, and then my bat follows my mouse. So I've got a lot of different things that are um, responding to user input. Um, updates at least three different sprite properties in the draw loop. So sprite.x, sprite.scale, sprite.visible. Um, yeah, I think all of those. So I've got visibilities turning on and off. I've got x and y's moving. I've got these x and y's moving. I don't have scale changing and I don't have um, don't have rotations going on. I might do a rotation on the bat. So it randomly rotates when I move the mouse. Um, I think I'm gonna do that. So I'll do another if statement and I'll randomly rotate the bat so it kind of looks like he's flying more. Um, actually, I might just do that in the controls here. So I'm just gonna do a sprite not rotation. 
we'll do a bat dot rotation we'll do a random number um, between negative 15 and positive 15 cool so um, again three different sprite properties that are updating I think I've hit that two conditionals that are triggered by uh, a variable or a sprite property I've got that so I've got um, a conditional that's based on a variable I've got a conditional that's based on a sprite property um, as well so I've got both of those covered. Increment or decrement two variables or sprite properties. So I've got a clicks gets clicks plus one. So there's one. I've got an X value, a Y value. They get adjusted um, using the counter pattern. So that hits those marks. Instructions included. I've got that. Got my text that tells what to do. Click the mouse to reveal the jack-o-lantern move the mouse to reveal the bat. So I'm guessing that I want to kind of make this so that you know somebody keeps clicking and all of a sudden they get kind of it's supposed to kind of freak them out. Uh, I could play a sound, which I am going to play a sound actually. I'm going to show you how to do that maybe. Oh yeah, see they've got a stop sound and play sound. Sweet. So we're going to add that in here at the end. So if you watch the videos you could add sound to your stuff. And then comment and white space used appropriately, and card is unique. Um, again, commenting, got comments in there. I'm probably going to add some more comments between these ifs to actually say what they're supposed to do. But I do have some comments in there uh, when I started to kind of set up my code. Jenk is great. Um, and again, you know, I've, I've got a pretty good program. I got 75 lines of code. Now, if I got rid of the, you know, this extra white space, it'd maybe be like 60, but that's all right. Um, let's add a sound. So the cool thing is, is if you rub over it and you go to see examples, it's going to help you uh, with that. It gives you um, these different sounds that are sampled already in there, um, and then it shows you what happens. So to play sound, we're going to play sound when something happens. So if I go into clicks, um, I'm actually going to do clicks equal equal 20. Um, and the reason why I'm going to say when it is exactly 20 is because I don't want, um, no, because that's going to stop going to stop your stuff. Okay, so here's what I can do. Um, okay, this is what I'm contemplating because if I do greater than 20 and I play a sound when it's greater than 20, um, we might have an issue. But let's just try it. Okay, so there's my default, but it just constantly goes in and in and in and in and in in that so that's a problem um, so here's what I'm going to do instead I'm going to uh, make this equal equal and I'm going to copy this and paste it outside so it's constantly updating my ghost X and ghost Y value but as soon as it hits 20 I'm gonna reset this back to 350 and this one to 350. I think that's what it is. Where did I start at? Uh, go back up here. Um, 300. So now my ghost is actually leaving the screen. And there he goes. Um, but now it only played that sound once. So now I need to change that from the default sound to something else. So I'm going to go to choose. You can actually make new sounds, but I'm just going to do um, music. Uh, so 